watching for the show because I thought it was Space Aliens. No, it's Canadians. <laughs> um, the, uh, no, Ryan and I were working on this project called Sex Gun and we started talking about uh, ideas and one of the things that really fascinated us was like Paris during Nazi occupation. You, we looked at these pictures of Parisians, you know, sitting in nice clothes in sidewalk cafes, drinking espressos while Nazi stormtroopers were going by. We thought, wow, that was that's really interesting. The incongruity of people's efforts to maintain the normalcy of their lives under this extraordinary circumstance and incredibly repressive regime. Could we take that idea, translate it into a contemporary setting, and, and use that as a as a kind of a world for storytelling? And that was what we did. So we came up with this idea that LA has been colonized by this mysterious uh, invading force that may be Canadians and maybe not. And they have built these 300 foot metallic walls, close everybody in, and the rules of society have all been upended. And it's about this family um, with uh, Josh Holloway and Sterling Kells as the, as the married couple. Uh, we're trying to navigate that world and figure out how they're going to survive. How much of that invasion are we actually going to see? Is it going to be in you know, flashbacks throughout the season? Uh, more, uh, I would say more war stories uh, than anything else. I, it was very uh, recent and kind of traumatic event for everybody, and it, 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 it ch obviously changed the world in a big way, and everybody kind of deals with it in their own way, but it's much more interesting to us to see the uh, character impacts than the, than the actual, you know, the, the visuals, the, the revisiting it visually is, is less interesting than, than seeing how it impacts your characters and how they, how they talk about it and how it's affected them and the choices they, they make now today based on that. But there's certainly, I mean, the physical environment reflects massive changes. There's very few cars, there's these big walls up, there's lots of signs and propaganda from the occupation, there's um, resistance propaganda. I mean, you really get a sense that this world is upended. You saw, if you saw the trailer, there's a sort of the missing persons board. I mean, so you really feel like it's a very dislocated world that our characters are living in. But it's not a traditional dystopic world like Blade Runner or The Road or something that's, you know, it's not. The Los Angeles has survived in a lot of ways intact. You know, there's still palm trees and 90% of the structures are still the same way they were. Sort of like Paris, you know, the, the Nazis didn't come in and level all the beautiful architecture of Paris. They came in and occupied an existing city, which they left pretty much as it was, even though they were now running it. Are you going to humanize the occupiers, or are they to be kind of one-dimensional bad guys for now? Hopefully they'll just be horribly cliched and one-dimensional. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> No, I mean, we, that's, that's a very good question and a very big part of our thinking. I think that there's a lot of gray in our show. There's not a lot of black and white. So um, we hope that we will upend some of your expectations about what it means to be an occupier, what it means to be in resistance, what it means to be living in a, in a climate of oppression like this. We've tried to avoid, I think, some of the simple solutions or sort of cliche answers to those questions. I mean, I think that the, one of the great things about, about the show is that it, at its core, it's a human drama. And uh, the, the, interesting, the, the most interesting villains to us are the people that, uh, the humans, that have uh, decided to collaborate and, uh, and serve in this kind of proxy government role, just like the Vichy in France did. And those people who have, have been put under the same extraordinary circumstances as everybody else, but that chose to side with the occupiers and why they did that and why they made those choices and, and how much of their soul they can sell and still, you know, look at themselves in the mirror. And, you know, that, that those are the true villains. I mean, the villains, you know, the, every, the, everybody hated the Nazis. We knew the Nazis were terrible, but the, the things that fascinated us were the Vichy and the French that, that they, these people stormed into your country and took it over and you decided to sign up with them. And, and, the, and those are the characters that, that we want to explore. How does it feel to work with Josh? Oh my gosh, it's awesome. I mean, Josh and I became really good friends during the making of Lost, and we talked, we've been talking for years about finding something to do together, and you know, those things, you know, sometimes it just seems like just talk, and it's hard because, you know, you have different schedules. He was on a show, Intelligence, that could have gone for, you know, six years or seven years. You know, I was busy with other things. I mean, it was really fortunate that we happened to develop the script just at the moment when Josh was available looking to do something new. We talked a lot about it being Josh when we were developing it, and we were fortunate enough that 
we, we sent it to him first and we were fortunate enough that he decided 